It's very permanent. <coughs> they asked me to give a brief speech. That's it. I, no, there you go. Based on personal attention. Oh, I did that one. I'm done? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Hu Allah Di Jalan Al Muslimin You know how to write? <laughs> You've had a half hour to write What made you a good self-interested in Islam? Is there any particular... Okay, this one I will uh, take from the floor That's a question I always get about how we come to Islam, what inspires people to go to Islam, priests and preachers going to Islam, and, and the story of my family, how we came to Islam. Okay? It's on the website under priests and preachers and Islam. And you can go to google.com and just type these words, priests, preachers, Islam, and you're going to find something like 2,500 websites with the same story out there. Or you can just go to my website and get the whole thing because it's at islamtomorrow.com slash Yusuf, Y-U-S-U-F. But I don't think the story is really about me as much as it is about other people. Because the person that first entered Islam wasn't me. It was my friend who was a Catholic priest. And I was a Protestant preacher. And my father, who was also a minister. And also my wife. And also other priests, preachers that I knew. So I highly recommend that you take some time, go to the website and get some paper in your printer and print it out because otherwise you're going to go, oh, oh, trying to read it all. It's 16 pages or 18 pages long and you need to really do that. Print it out and read it because it's, uh, for me, uh, I lived it. So I can't tell you how much it meant to me because it's my life. And of course it meant a lot to me. But if you read the story, most people read it, they tell me, I'm talking about non-Muslims, tell me that it turns their life around. Um, they start thinking, wow. Because, not just because, and there's, there's something you can do, it's kind of like the cheap side of something, like what, when the debates. Because if you want to just take this as a matter of fact, how could it be that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, yet today, so much media attention against Islam. How could it be? This is in itself an amazing statement. We accept it right away. Islam is the fastest growing religion. You see people all the time coming to Islam, right here in America. America! And you go to other countries, and they're looking at America as like the biggest enemy to Islam in the world, yet people right here are in Islam. Why? Why? Is that not enough of a question just in itself? Then how come when they say that women are abused so bad by Islam, yet women are 70% of the people coming into Islam? So what's the story there? And then when you start to say that there's no salvation and it's all bad and it's, uh, you know, they're all the lies against Islam, yet the priests, preachers, ministers, elders, disciples of all these other religions are coming to Islam. The pundits that I have met from the Hindus that have come to Islam. Hello, hello, hello. The nuns that have come to Islam. How could this be if there's something wrong with Islam? It's not possible. There's got to be at least your brain should say, oh, let me look into this. And alhamdulillah, when people hear that, they do look into it. It's called the truth. Something that the people of this country have almost forgotten about. Something that we as Muslims are forgetting about because we live in this country and listen to the lies constantly. I'm pretty much done with the questions. Somebody wants to know, here we go. Television. Is it halal or haram? Television is halal. As long as you don't turn it on. <laughs> you had to look, didn't you? It's blank, isn't it? <laughs> Television. Video games. Game Boys. If there was ever anything 
that you could point to and say that is the work of Shaitan. I just named it. Why? When you do that, are you thinking about Allah? When you're playing those games and shooting all those guys or driving that race car 90 miles an hour, 190 miles an hour, is there anything at all in your heart thinking about Allah? And the answer is no. It's not. The same way with the television. You say, oh, I need to watch the news. You need to watch the news or the naked lady giving the news. Which is it? Come on, guys, tell the truth. Which is it? Oh, we only watch the... We, uh, you know, good Muslims, we watch Al Jazeera. Ah, the lady's more naked over there than they are. <laughs> well, I mean, tell it like it is. Am I lying or telling the truth? Uh, I think most people try to stay away from what I'm talking about because they're afraid. Oh, I don't want people to think the bad thing about me. I don't care what you think about me. I want you to think better about yourself than to sit there and watch this nonsense. And you say, well, we just watch it for the animal shows. We just the animal shows. Why? So you know what the mating habits of the North American bullfrog is. <laughs> what benefit is that for you? Huh? What are you watching this thing for? Come on, tell the truth. Why are you watching this thing? The cartoons for the kids. Have you seen the cartoons lately? South Park, Beavis and Butthead, The Simpsons? Excuse me. It's horrible. It is so bad. And they take for granted in these cartoons things that when I was a kid, if you even said these words, you'd be eating lye soap. You would not get away with the things these guys say as a joke. Everybody goes, ah, 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 ah. That's how bad it is. And so Shaitan has made the bad seem not only acceptable, even good. Oh, I heard a good one last night. Ah, ah, ah. Good? You said good? Yeah, there's these two lesbians walking down the street and there's a... What? What are you talking about? This is something Allah hates. How can you be saying something that this is a joke? SubhanAllah! Don't you fear that you're in the last days? Don't you think about what Allah has said in His book about those days? Or the Prophet love has mentioned in his hadith about what's going to happen in these days? Let me close with this. One hadith. It's a big hadith. It's got some mention of some things in it that really should make you jump up and go, whoa, what's happening? Because he mentioned in the very last days we would be communicating with the animals in the sea. Now that was 1400 years ago. Was there any time at that 1400 years ago that people were trying to communicate with the porpoise or the dolphins or something like that? No. But they do it now, don't they? Oops. Same hadith says that a person's extremities will talk to them. Your extremities means what? Huh? You know the thing that holds your cell phone? Will talk to you. And his side will inform him about what's going on in his house while he is away. You know your side? You know where you wear the little clip for your pager that tells you what's happening at home? To bring home a loaf of bread or whatever? Huh? Huh? This doesn't make you get excited? You don't go, oh, What is that? And we live in the very days that the Prophet Sallallahu talked about and we just go right along like, huh? Who cares? No big deal. No big deal. What time does the Simpsons come on again? And our children are suffering more than anybody because today they can't wait to get home from school to turn on their computers or Game Boys and get in front of that thing again, hook up the headphones and go off into Nana land. Seriously. How many will admit to that being a true fact? Raise your hand. And we're supposed to be the Muslims, by the way. How about the non-Muslims? What have they got to hang on to? We're distracted. Shaitan has us so distracted 
we're not doing our job. And then he keeps the other people away from Islam. If the Muslims of the United States would just practice Islam, listen to me, 10%, not 100% like the Sahabi, 10% of what they did, Rasulullah said we would get 50 times the reward. And they asked him, 50 times of their time or of our time? He said, of your time. He said, because you see me and you believe in me, but they don't see me and they believe in me. Muslims, alhamdulillah, we believe in Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All we need to do is just make a few adjustments in our life and we'll be a lot better off. First thing I recommend